Hey, I'm Dave here with Soul Home, and I thought we should spend some time talking a little bit about net metering and what is it and what is happening in California with net metering. So net metering is simply policy. It's policy that dictates how much the utilities are gonna pay you for your solar. And before we talk about that, I thought we should go do a little bit of a history lesson and talk about where did net metering come from. So net metering is actually net energy metering, so NEM or NEM for short. And the first version of that policy came about in 1996 when solar systems were just starting to kind of catch on in, in California in particular. So they figured there needed to be a policy that dictated how your system would interconnect with the grid and how the utilities would pay you for your energy. And that's what that policy dictates. So in 1996, the first version of that came out and it was called NEM 1.0 or net metering 1.0. That ran until 2017. So just about five years ago or so when that policy sunset and net metering 2.0 came about with slightly less favorable terms without going into too much detail about how it worked. The first policy was pretty much dictated by kilowatt hours. So if you produce the kilowatt hour of solar and you use the kilowatt hour of solar, they would basically cancel each other out. You got to use the utility as your battery for free. I mean, it was a smoking deal. So that changed slightly about five years ago with the introduction of the 2.0 policy. And what they changed was they stopped doing it by kilowatt hours as much and more by the dollars. And why that matters is because of time of use. So now everybody is mandated to be on a time of use plan. Those of you got in a couple years ago, you might've just got a notification uh, from your local utility. I know here in our territory, San Diego Gas and Electric did send out a, an email or a letter. So those of you who just got their systems more than a couple years ago, uh, you were grandfathered in on the non-time of use terms for two years. And you, pr you probably got some type of notification from your utility, an email or a letter that said, hey, sorry, your time's up on a tiered rate structure. You're gonna get kicked over to a time of use plan now. So basically everybody is mandated to be on time of use, uh, especially if they have a new solar system. So, and what that means for the 2.0 policy, when your sun is producing, the bulk of your production is between 10 in the morning and two in the afternoon during off-peak hours. This is the lower rates of the day that they're, the utility is charging you. So what that means is that since they're charging you less rates, the credit they give you for that energy is also less. And why that matters is because when four to nine hits during peak rates, they're charging you now a premium. You're spending more money for that energy to import it back. So it's no longer a one-to-one -one ratio of kilowatt hours anymore. There's a little bit of a difference in price, which kind of devalues the, the solar, so to speak. So what we're having to do is design solar systems maybe 15 to 20 percent larger to kind of overcome that difference in price right because whatever they're charging you for power at that time so what's happening next is net metering 3.0 the third version of this policy and that right now is tentatively scheduled to go into effect uh, next april in fact april 14th is the actual date um, and this is based off of guidance we got from the public utilities commissions just a few weeks ago and what they're doing is they're completely gutting the amount of money that they're going to pay you for your solar when you spin that meter backwards during the middle of the day. So the current version of net metering will pay you on average about 30 cents a kilowatt hour when you're spinning the meter backwards during off peak hours during the day. The proposed rate for net metering 3.0 is just over six cents a kilowatt hour, massive reduction. So when I talk to my clients about this and what's happening, what's going to happen, the first thing they ask me is, what, what is it with these utilities? And they get all angry. Is it greed? What's going on here? And honestly, yeah, I think a little bit, but there really is a bigger story to this than just utility greed. There, there's this thing called a duck curve. A duck curve is a graph of demand from the utilities over time throughout the day. And that curve will show you, as you can see, goes through the years of how that curve has changed. And why does it look like that? Why is demand so high in the mornings, demand drops significantly during the middle of the day and it creeps up at the highest point at night when everybody comes home from work? Well, that's because of solar. And what is happening 
the demand during the middle of the day throughout the state has been getting less and less and less every year. And the utilities are worried that if that line were to ever to cross zero demand, that would be very bad for the grid. So that's what the new net metering policy is trying to fix. And what they're doing is incentivizing people to get batteries. So whereas the first version of net metering was great, free battery, right? You send your power off during the day, you bring it back at night, didn't cost you anything. What a great deal. The second version, pretty close. They devalued it a little bit with time of use, but what did we end up doing? Well, we would just build the systems bigger, so it almost made the problem a little bit worse because you have even more and more solar during the middle of the day that's not being offset at night. So the newest version of net metering that they're proposing to take effect in April, they're really hammering down the fact that, look, if you wanna put solar on your house and interconnect with the grid, it's not gonna be worth it unless you put in a battery. So that's why they're pushing. That's They're pushing hard for people to install batteries to try to even out that duck curve. They wanna get a more even demand throughout the day. So instead of you back feeding the grid during the middle of the day, you're simply gonna charge your battery. And then that battery will discharge at night, four to nine during the peak hours. And if there's any left, it'll keep going throughout the night uh, till it's discharged to you know where you tell it to stop. And what that does is completely evens out the demand throughout the day and the evenings. It's better the, for the utilities. And it even provides some redundancy. Some of the utilities here in California are providing incentives for you to let them control your battery to provide grid stability when otherwise there'd be a blackout. Okay, so look, if, if you already have solar, don't freak out. This probably won't affect you anytime soon. But if you don't have your system installed by April, you're gonna be affected by this new policy. So it should be very clear that once you get your system installed, before the new policy takes place, you are going to be grandfathered in for a period of 20 years. So that's why it's so important that if you do not have your system installed now, and if you've been on the fence, you've been thinking about it, just get it in before April. And before April really means probably you wanna get it in closer to February-ish. There's a lot of people out there who just haven't pulled the trigger yet and have just been on the fence and now this is what's gonna push them over the edge to go ahead and finally get their solar installed. So don't take your time because I'm sure they're gonna have a big backlog of applications before April actually hits. What do you have to do to secure yourself on the current policy? You have to submit your interconnection application before the deadline, okay? Your system doesn't actually physically have to be installed according to the CPUC, but you got to have your application submitted. You know, another common question we get here at Solar Home is, hey Dave, uh, can I put a couple extra panels on my roof? Uh, you know, we got an electric car, we're gonna go to a heat pump water heater. Uh, you can, but if you do that in most cases, it's gonna kick you out of your current policy and then you'll become subject to the new policy. So if you're looking to augment your system, make it a little bit bigger, put some extra panels up there, again, do it now. Because if you do it after April, guess what? You're gonna be on net metering 3.0. In a nutshell, if you're looking for the fastest return on investment, get your money back as fast as possible, get your solar in now, get it in before April. You know, if you don't mind waiting a little bit longer and having that added benefit of having a backup battery, yeah, after April's fine. And in fact, if you were thinking about getting batteries anyway, this really isn't gonna affect you. So if you need help with your system, you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us through social media, or you can go to our page or our webpage, or give us a call. We're here to help.